Hey everybody, Rebels of Cloud 9 here, and today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of something that's really fun. It's pretty simple to do actually, and it adds really nice detail to your model. And that is, I'm going to be taking this regular old wing here, and you can see I'm going to be making some clear wingtip lights. And this is already solid through, so this is a fairly simple process. You don't really need a lot of tools to do this, and uh, it's a lot of really fun results once it's completed. It adds some really nice detail to your model. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I need to cut out the plastic that's already here. So I'm going to take my hobby knife and I'm cutting it just at a straight angle. This one's going to be a bit more difficult to do than some models. Um, some aircraft uh, landing light or wingtip lights rather are bigger. This one's quite small. So I'm going to just cut that out. Like, come on. Stuck on. There we go. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my small metal files. You don't need to do this if you're. You can carve it out yourself if you like, but I like to use this metal file, it's just a square file. And I just go and sand it on the one edge here, and then I sand it on the other edge here. So what that does is that trues up the corners there. So now I have this really nice little section cut out there, and we're all ready. We're already done step one, so let's go and get step two ready. So the next step is to make the wingtip light itself, and for that we're going to need some clear plastic, and thankfully there's already some included with the model. So it's really simple, you can see I've already cut some away here. You just use the edge of the uh, frame here, and I'm not, what you want to do, this is kind of the trickier part, you, you do want to keep it fairly small, because we're going to have a lot of sanding to do. And the least amount of sanding that it is, the better. So now, we've got this nice little round piece of clear plastic here. And we need to sand down an edge on them. I've got these sanding blocks from Vallejo. I really like these. You can use anything. I just happen to have these right now. And what I'm going to be doing is sanding two flat edges at a nice 90 degree angle. So I don't even need to sand that much, actually. And don't worry about it being all scuffed up. That's actually okay. It's not gonna, it's not gonna impede the look that much. Not to a noticeable extent, anyways. So now I'm going to turn it to another angle here. Like I said, a nice 90 degree angle. And I'll sand this on. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to keep sanding this till I get that nice shape. It might take a little bit of time to do. Um, I might have to start all over, but like I said, thankfully there's a whole runner here that we have we can use plus actually you can use the whole outside of the runner if you want to if you need if you need to uh, it does happen I have lost a couple of these they'll ping away or they just didn't work out as well as I wanted to so it's really no harm if you have to start all over again because you've got a whole bunch of this stuff and it's just mostly plastic I, I would be tossing out anyways so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to keep sanding here and I'll be back once I get that nice sharp angle. So I got the little bit here, sanded down the angles there, test fitted it a few times to make sure it fit nice into the uh, edge of the wing there and pretty happy with it so far. So the next step is the light bulb. Now depending on your subject, um, a lot of aircraft would sometimes use like a color lens over the wingtip. And sometimes, like in the case of this Corsair, I'll show a picture here, you can see it is a light bulb and a clear lens. So it's a colored light bulb, clear lens, and I'm going to replicate that light bulb right now. So I've done this a couple of times before. It's really cool. I love how this effect works. So what we're going to need is a pin vise. 
really, really tiny uh, bit inside of there. I don't actually know what size this is. It's been so long since I bought it. Um, just <laughs> find a small one. You can you can find them at specialty, um, as specialty hardware at model shops and things. Uh, if you look around. So I'm going to load this into some clamps here. And I'm going to... Sorry, gang. There we go. Drill out this hole. Yeah, you only need to go about a millimeter, maybe a millimeter and a half. That's kind of normal. I mean, I know on TV and things you see bigger light bulbs in the wingtips of aircraft, but I mean, it's just not a realistic expectation. The average is about a millimeter. That's all I'm saying. So, let's just see. That looks pretty good. Yeah, you can't really see it. You can see it better on the other side when you flip it around. It's hard to show because it's such a small scale. I do apologize for that. But uh, yeah, that's about it. That's about a millimeter, millimeter and a half. That'll do quite well. And I want to get it as close to the edge as possible. That's really important. Because when you do it outside too far, you run the risk of sanding over it, which I'll show you in a minute. That'll make more sense in the next few steps. But for right now, that's pretty good. So I have to go get set up here, but I'm gonna show you guys what the next step is, and it's one of my favorite parts of doing this process. Okay, so the next step here is we are going to paint the light bulb. I really love doing this. Now, you don't need clear paints for this. You can use solid colors, gloss, flat, doesn't really matter. But in this case, I'm going to be using X23 clear blue. Now, what's really important is, this is a very important part of the model, um, make sure you have the right color of light that's supposed to go on that side of the aircraft. You know, don't put red on one side and green or blue on the other side. Uh, double check your instructions and see what's supposed to go where, and a quick Google search can find usually find out what your aircraft has if it's not listed in the instructions. So I'm just going to take this clear blue, and I'm just going to paint it down in the opening we just made, like that. See if this will, there you go, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So there's our tiny little blue light bulb. I'm actually going to put just a little bit more paint in there, just a bit. And I'm going to wipe off the excess there. Because I don't need that. Now the next step, this is important, you can see it in the picture that I just showed, but sometimes I'll use silver and do this, but in this case it's actually supposed to be black, so sometimes I paint it silver, that helps it reflect a little bit more, but we're going to paint all the rest of the outside flat black. So you can use silver, you can use black, we can use green or yellow, or zinc chromate, doesn't really matter. But this is going to be very helpful for a couple of reasons. It's going to help when we glue this to the model so that the clear plastic doesn't f uh, fog up on us because that's a chance that could happen and also it's going to help this detail stand out quite a bit more when the model is completed so I'm just going to go ahead paint all this black it needs a second coat because it's clear and clear always always need two coats with clear plastic and there we go basically disappeared now on the camera but there it is I can see the little blue speck of a light bulb down there so I'm gonna go let this dry and then uh, yeah I'll show you the next step all right, so one of the things that I noticed is that I really wasn't seeing the blue that well through here. So what I did is I painted a little bit of silver behind the clear blue, and now it stands out quite a bit. I can see it a lot better now, so that's a quick, simple fix. 
So the next step is I'm going to take some super glue. I have some Mr. Hobby super glue with a little brush on the end. It makes it a little easier, gotta admit. And I'm going to super glue this to the end edges here. Sorry, just make sure I got enough glue on there. That's a bit much, I can see that. There we go. And now I'm going to need to do this very carefully. I need to line up the hole that we just drilled out. And I have to make sure I have it in the right position too. Um, let me just compare my notes. Okay, so that goes this way. And I just need to get it. I think that's about it. Sorry, I'm going to have to do a bit of this off camera. Oh. A little hard. There we go. There we go. So there you can see it's glued on in the corner like that. And that's how you want to leave it. I'm going to leave it to dry and fully cure for a few hours. I'm just going to leave it here. Let it really get nice and hardened up. And then I can come back to the next step here. But that looks really sharp right now. It's hard to see that in this angle. But it looks really cool. I'm really happy with that. Alright, it's been a little while now, and that is glued on there. Look at that. That is really cool. And you can kind of, the camera's having such a hard time focusing on, on it. But painting the inside of that silver really brightened it out. I can see it. I spent a minute ooing and aahing over it. Really happy with that. So I'm going to zoom out right now, and you get to the next step here. So now I'm going to go back to these Tamiya... Sorry, Vallejo sanding sponges here. And I'm going to be going with a 240 grit. And then I'll move to a 400 eventually. But basically what you're going to do here is I'm going to be spending a lot of time sanding this down. Now, what's really important here, not to work fast. Um, you can bust this off again. I mean, it's, it's super glue. It's not the strongest, strongest thing in the world. Um, so you can pop it off. I've done that before plenty of times. You get too aggressive, especially on the top here. But what's really important with this is you don't want to sand all the way down so that it's level with the plastic, okay? You just want to sand it down just so it's just barely bigger than this section of the wing and this, the same on the underside, okay? So just so it's a little bit bigger. That's when you really want to stop with the aggressive sandpapers. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to spend some time sanding this. It's hard to do it down here. I need it kind of more up by my face so I can really see what I'm doing. Um, and this, like I said, this is just going to take a while to do that. And once you get there, again, not flush, not smooth, not all that. Uh, we'll move to different grits and um, we'll get that profile done in just a moment. So I'm going to go take my time and sand the rest of this away here. Alright, you can just see there, you can see how it's just sticking out a little bit. And it's hard to see on that corner edge there, but it's sticking out all around there. So it's not completely rounded off and smooth yet. We're going to do that now. Now the reason why I'm stopping with the more abrasive grits, I went with a 240 and a 400, and now I'm working my way up to the final grit, not which is not that one, which is here. This is an 800 and a 1000, and if I wanted to, I could even go up to about 1500 for a more polishing grit. But I want to stop it about here so that when I work with these grits, these finer grits, it'll remove all the scratches out of here. It's not going to totally remove the scratches. We're going to get to that at, at the end here. But this is what I'm going to be doing now is just polishing it down. And this is really where you start to profile this piece of glass. This is where you get it into the shape. And the other thing that helps is if you're using this more abrasive grit and you sand it down to the profile, you then have to clean all of the scratches that you made on the plastic, and that's not fun. These ones are a lot finer, the 1000 grit and 800 grit, and even, like I said, up to 1500, depending on what you have available. 
um, you're not going to really see these scratches here and they can be polished away really quickly or filled in with a primer. So that's why I'm using this finer grit right now. So just like before, I'm going to go sand this away and then we're going to get to the final step. We are almost done. This is very exciting. Okay, I have gone over the light and I have sanded it down with a thousand grit. Got it up to a really nice polish here. As nice and smooth as I can get it here. And I'm really pleased with this. Got the profile in there, got everything done right. I'm really happy with this. Really, really, really pleased with this. Now I'm going to do one more thing here. And this is usually something I do as a final, final step. It's like one of the last things that I do when I'm working on the model. Usually after I get it sanded down to the correct profile, I'll use some tape or some masking agent or something and I'll cover up the windows to protect them from a flat coat and other paint primers and stuff like that. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do here. Um, you may notice it is a bit rough looking and we're going to get it back to that really nice shine and it's super easy to do. And all I'm going to be using for this is some Tamiya Clear. This is X22. It's just a clear gloss. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Um, I happen to have Tamiya on hand, so I'm using that. And all you need to do, this is super easy to do and very, very satisfying, is you just brush it on. And you're going to want to add a good portion on there. Good. Don't, don't let it go on so thin. But look at that. It it's hard for you to see on this little 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 piece. I kind of picked the wrong subject for this demonstration. I really apologize for that. I thought this would be a bit bigger uh, wingtip than I had uh, thought when, before I started getting into this video. But there we go. Look at that. You just try this when you when you're doing this yourself. It just brings it right back. It's shiny. It's clear. You can see the little light bulb inside of there. You can see everything. It's everything's back. It is so cool. It is so satisfying. And you just paint that on there. I'm gonna actually apply. I usually do have like two thin coats on top of it, and that usually works quite well. Sometimes three. It depends. And of course, in this case, you can actually paint it clear blue, clear green, clear red. You know, if the whole thing is is one solid color. But that's it. That is really cool. Alright everybody, and that is how you do it. I've got red over here, and I've got the blue one over here, and... Basically, I'm ready to move on with the model now. I've got those wingtips added on. As I mentioned, I add the gloss on to the wingtip lights, like, very, very last. Um, it's it's a bit of a fussy thing to do sometimes. This process is really fun. It adds it's very rewarding because it adds a really cool detail to your model. But it is a bit tricky to do sometimes. I will admit, there's times when you're sanding and they pop off or you can't quite get it to the right shape. It just takes some time and patience, and you know it, it, I think it's worth it in the end. I really really do. It's going to look really cool with these wings folded up and you're going to see those uh, wingtip lights there. And it's going to look a lot nicer than painting it silver and then painting it clear over that. Which is something I've done quite a few times in the past. And that's a good looking effect. Don't get me wrong. It's a great looking effect, I think. But it's so much more satisfying to have real clear uh, wingtip lights in there and just have that little detail added in there. I really, really love it. Take your time with this. Like I said, it is it is a bit frustrating because it's tiny. It's very, very tiny parts. You're working with very tiny details. And this works with a myriad of scales. It doesn't really matter. I've done this in 72nd. I've mostly done it in 48th scale. And I've even done it in 32nd scale a few times. So you can go, go nuts with whatever your project is and whatever you think will work best. Go ahead and try that out. But uh, I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration video. I hope it's been helpful for you. And if you've had success with this, trying out this method, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear that this worked out for you and love to hear your results uh, that, that you came away with during this little process here. But until next time, everybody, this is Rubs with Cloud9. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all later.